Well, we got a big week ahead of us, and uh, I know our players are excited to go on the road and play a really good opponent. It's playing really good right now, um, and uh, we'll have our hands full. So I think it's just a matter of getting back to work, trying to find ways to improve, um, continuing to you know tweak some things to get better and, and push them forward. And this is a great opportunity to to see uh, how far we can come, but it'll be a, a great test for us. And uh, but we're looking forward to playing in this atmosphere. Back on Friday night when you were watching, there were so many key moments and big plays, but how how big was the touchdown at the end of the half to get the guys, for you all to be able to go in the locker room and, and, and be kind of calm and like, hey, we can we can do this? Well, obviously things weren't going our way in the first half and, uh, you know, a lot of shooting ourselves in the foot, a lot of key mistakes that hurt us, uh, but we just kind of hung in there and found a way to get a score at the end. Uh, I thought we moved the ball uh, at least a little bit and found a way to, to get a good drive together and score. Um, start of the second half was okay. It wasn't great. It's not like we came out uh, uh, firing away, but they, they scored right away. But we were just able to respond, so I just think the uh, toughness that our team had, the ability to just kind of hang in there and play to the end. Uh, came through for us in a, in a pivotal pivotal game where we needed it to happen. I have two questions. I guess first, what went into the decision to with Colin Lacey to, I guess, redshirt him, and then how big was it to have people like Kataris and Chris step up when you need those playmakers there in the passing game? Well, with Colin, uh, you know, we, we support uh, all the decisions that our players uh, make that they think is best for them. Um, you know, I was not in agreement with the decision. Uh, it was not best for our football team, but I understand where he's coming from, and we definitely want to do what's best for all of our players, and we'll always we'll do that um, because I do think we're not as good a team without him. Um, but at the same time, we're going to support him, uh, you know, with whatever he wants us to, to help him with. Uh, when it came to other guys stepping up, you know, we had to have other guys step up. You know, Colin was a really good player for us, and he was just getting uh, fully healthy and. Uh, so Amari came in and, uh, you know, made a couple of mistakes early, but uh, played hard and played the entire game, found ways to make plays at the, in the second half. Uh, Chris Hughes stepped in uh, and made a couple of nice catches for us. So I just think that between the receiving room having some injuries and dealing with some blows and the offensive line dealing with quite a few blows and we, we had some more, uh, we got to just continue to, to fight through that. And, um, you know, other guys got to be able to step up. Yeah, Where Sorry, are you? Are you? I'm um, Kent. Where do you rank? Where'd you rank that win? As far as I mean, coming fr from behind, didn't look like anything was going your way. Kind of like that Georgia Tech game last year. And how do you keep the guys in it in a game like that? And I, I guess you draw on your experience in those situations. Well, when it comes to um, a tough, hard-fought win uh, and, and a gut check, that was one of the biggest gut checks we, we've ever had, uh, where we really had to. Um, you know, grind this thing out and, and, and not lose our confidence and not give in. So the gut check uh, was probably number one as far as uh, games throughout the history um, where we easily could have folded. And um, so that was good. Now, uh, I'd like to play better. I'd like to be more efficient. Uh, we got to work hard to do that. Uh, we just got to continue to battle through it. But uh, I was very proud of the football team and the coaches. We could easily uh, – you know, uh, lost our confidence, got down on ourselves, uh, not played as hard in the second half, but we did not. And, uh, you know, going on the road and beating a good team that uh, had played good football uh, was a good win. So we just got to figure out a way to, to build on that and uh, find ways to improve and be more efficient moving forward. Jeff, let's follow up on that. Um, how do you determine when it's time to kind of stay calm in the locker room or raise hell? What? How, what? <laughs> What goes into that? Well, I probably raised enough hell. It was probably time to be calm. So really, the, the locker room was calm. Uh, now, we explained what needed to happen and what we needed to do, and we were forceful with that. But you really just kind of had to make some corrections and uh, you know identify the problems we have and how can we make sure it doesn't happen again and let's get back in this ball game. We're not really that far off. Uh, we got to take advantage of certain things and correct this and that. And uh, we got to play to the end. And uh, luckily, we, we talk about that scenario a lot, uh, even in the off season, of how, you know, that's how real football is going to be during the season. If you think it's a fantasy land, you're going to go out and dominate every opponent, 
I mean, that's that's great if we can. I, I rarely I rarely see that. Uh, so you got to be realistic going into the season. Like, hey, we're you, you know, there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be momentum swings. There's going to be some tough times. If you're not mentally able to handle it, then maybe this sport isn't for you. But uh, you're going to have to be tough mentally to with able to withstand all the different swings that come through and. Sometimes you get on a roll and you're starting to feel good. You're like, okay, I finally arrived. And then if you if you feel that way a little too much, it's going to bite you in the rear end. And then when things are going rough, if you lose too much confidence and get too angry uh, and give in, then you're not going to be able to overcome it. So it's man, it's just a, a fine line you got to keep. But uh, it it is addressed year round. Uh, we try to be um, the mentally toughest team we can. It doesn't always work, but I think we've done a pretty good job of hanging in there through some adverse times and we're going to have more as we move forward uh, with a, a lot of new pieces sometimes stepping in and we've just got to figure out a way to, to be more efficient and, and to figure out a way to get some wins. When I looked at some of the computer formulas that were part of the old BCS formula, you guys are actually ranked in the top 25. Do you feel like there are one or two areas with the team that if you could improve upon, you guys would kind of go up a notch? Well, I think uh, you know, we've identified a lot of the issues we've had. Um, we've tried to work on them. I'm not saying we've made a ton of progress, but we've made some, uh, and we've got to continue to get better at it. So, you know, summing it up quickly once again, you know, on defense, it's about you know getting calls in efficiently and quickly, and and making them as simple as we can because we've seemed like we've busted more things this year than we've ever had when a lot of it's the same calls. So. Uh, tweaking that to make it simpler, to make it more efficient, um, adjusting some of the calls to fit our personnel uh, so that we can be aggressive and create some stops. Once again, we had a couple of busts uh, that created big plays in the last game that, oh, man, you just you, you just can't do that. You, just, you rarely are you going to overcome the bust we had and the people that were that wide open. Uh, if you take away those couple plays, then then we're playing some real football. So okay how can we fix that and if it's sometimes it's things we've done for years but you know what it's 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 not working maybe it's just a, a head bit too complicated and we got to simplify it so we're, we're we're working through that and it seems like we're getting simpler and simpler as we go but you still got to have a little bit of uh adjustments that you make to win and on offense um you know really not turning it over and being good in in, in short yardage situations uh is pivotal for us and if we can um, fix that as well as we can. I think we can move the ball enough. But you know, in order to win at a high level, man, those things have to be hitting on all cylinders, on offense, defense, and special teams. We, we've we gained some edges on special teams at times. We were trying to time up uh, what we had a, a key factor, uh, a, a tendency that could help us block a kick, and they adjusted, and we jumped off sides. Uh, now, I go back to Georgia Tech. We found that same thing, and we got a block kick for a touchdown. But we got to be able to rein that back and, and know that that's not working. What is the down and distance? Got to be smarter. So we got to make a few adjustments there that, that hurt us. So I just think all three uh, segments have to be uh, clicking in order to, to beat really good teams. We had some success doing that last year. This year it's been a little more of a struggle, but we got to find ways to, to fix it and make sure we're, we're more efficient in all three segments. You got a lot of contributions from people that maybe fans didn't know, like Chris Hughes, but Karuski, and you also shuffled your O line a lot. You know, with guys that maybe aren't fully healthy. What's the message to your team during that? And then, if I could follow up real quick on Colin Lacey, do you expect to welcome him back next year in 2025? Okay. Uh, on the first question, you know, we we have had uh, quite a few injuries up front on the offensive line, and they continue to mount on. So we we are. Uh, you know, there, there's not a whole lot uh, of guys that have played for us left, so we've got to keep these five or six uh, guys healthy. Uh, so every everyone is up, uh, and they have to play. And uh, there might be a few others that haven't played at all that may have to get in because we, um, you know, we lost we lost one more for this past game that has played a lot of football for us. So we just got to work through it. I think those guys work hard, don't get a lot of credit, uh, and we're we're missing some guys. We got some other guys that are playing nicked up with severe injuries so it's just kind of we have a little bad luck on that but we got to work through it I mean I still expect them to play well and next guy up's got to get it done and that's why you practice year round and you tell the young guys you, you're gonna, your time's going to come uh, I don't know when it is but it's going to come so we got to be ready um, at the receiver position yeah we, we we've had some 
some injuries there that have uh, knocked us out between re- receivers and tight ends. And Chris Hughes has worked hard. We've got some capable guys, just haven't played a whole lot um, and uh, don't have a ton of experience. But their their time is going to be called, and we've just got to to work through it and continue to get our best players the ball as much as we can. But others have to feed off of that, and everyone has to contribute. And uh, um, you know, Isaac Brown's been getting worn down in these games. We've got to get all the running backs to contribute. Uh, you know, we want to use Ja'Cory and Chris and, and, and that, and, but uh, all the receivers got to contribute. You can't just, you know, go to them all the time. So I just think we've got to become a little better overall. Um, this, it comes, when it comes to Colin Lacey, you know, we'd love to have him back. <clears throat> Jeff, you go down 20-0, and based on how the last month have gone, it normally could have been really easy for some players to maybe kind of mail it in and not give forth their max effort, but it was evident that, that the team was still very much caring and wanted to battle back and get back into it. What to say about the state of the locker room, given that even in that situation, they still wanted to battle back? Well, like I said, I mean, as far as wins, uh, that was one I was – very very proud of of our football team because they hung in there and it wasn't easy i mean i'd be the first one to tell you you know at halftime you know i could have ran in and jumped in the river and not come up and uh because it was tough it's just like oh my gosh what the heck you know what what's going on here we got to get this fixed uh but you got to withstand it and uh, luckily i've been through hard times before um you know um it, it's it's not uh, it's not very fun uh but you can't uh you can't dwell on it. You got to believe in what you're doing. You got to believe in the solutions you have, and you got to attempt to to make them. And I just think that, uh, like I said, we we talk about this scenario quite a bit uh, because I understand in the game of football at a competitive level, it's gonna it's gonna happen a lot, probably way more so than people think. Uh, and you got to be mentally tough uh, to to withstand that. And I just think our team. It's mentally tough, and uh, I'm not going to say they can't be broken down at some point, but they, they are mentally tough. Um, they work hard. They want to win. It means something to them. We understand it's not going to be perfect, and our goal is to make it perfect, but it's, it's not going to be. But we got to be more efficient, and we got to be uh, cleaner in our play if we want to find ways to win. And that happens from me to our coaches down to our players. Everything has to be crisper, sharper, cleaner, uh, and we've got to get these things uh, addressed every week and continue to make improvements and not uh, lose confidence when things aren't going quite our way. Uh, and uh, so, yes, I, I'm proud of our team, and, and they work really hard, and we, we will have our hands full this week and be tested uh, to the max against a, a really, really hot team. Jeff, uh, in regards to Clemson, it feels like the past couple of seasons they haven't been the Clemson powerhouse national champion that the conference is accustomed to. It seems like Dabo's maybe found that back this year. What's different about this team and what he's doing? And what are the challenges of playing a team that's consistently a top dog in this conference? Well, I have a ton of respect for Coach Sweeney and uh, his team. They've, they've done a great job over the years. Uh, yeah, they faced a little adversity uh, the last couple of years, uh, a little bit, uh, because they're used to being dominant. But uh, you know what? He is stuck with his plan. Um, he has players that he's recruited and developed, and they have worked through a couple – ups and downs along the way and uh they played a really tough opponent the first week and really it was a close game until the second half and then just a few things didn't go their way and guess what they've fixed those and uh for the next six games they've been lights out uh they played really good football and they're hitting on all cylinders and they're good up front on defense they're athletic uh, at linebacker and in the secondary on offense the quarterback's now playing at a high level they got good weapons around them uh, they got good balance uh and uh, they're really good at home. So I think he uh, feels great about the direction his team is going. Uh, they have a, ch- a chance to be as good as anybody, uh, and we will have our hands full going and playing a team this hot on, on their home field. Jeff, have, first of all, have you ever been there to a game? I, I have not. You have not. What What do you kind of the atmosphere and, and at night game, it's it's going to be big. Your guys have been through a lot of those, but is it any different when it's on the road? And then the second thing, just talk about Klubnik a little bit as, as their quarterback. It seems like every week, every quarterback is so good in this league. Well, I think the atmosphere will be what college football is all about, and I'm sure it'll be uh, uh, hopping, uh, and they'll be ready to play. And it's good for our team to play in those atmospheres and environments. And We've been able to do it on our home field, uh, but now we'll be able to go on the road just like at Notre Dame and, and play in a great atmosphere. 
uh, in a big time game, and that's why you you work year round. I tell her guys, you work year round for these moments. Uh, so let's let's try to take advantage of it, and let's uh, you know, have a great week of practice, lay it all out there, and you know, go cut it loose come game time. Um, when it comes to Clemson's quarterback, uh, you know what? He's continued to progress like every quarterback. He's had a couple little struggles along the way, which is good for quarterbacks, but he's over the hump now. Uh, I think he's thrown for 20 touchdowns, three picks. Uh, they've had over 500 yards of offense, five out of six games or something like that, or six out of seven, I'm not for sure. Uh, but he's playing at a high level, and uh, they've kind of uh, built the offense around him and what his strengths are, uh, and right now it's clicking on all cylinders. So. Once again, we've, we've got to stop a good quarterback, and uh, we've got to find ways to uh, to do it better than what we've had, uh, and we've got to find ways to limit big plays uh, and make them earn it, uh, and that'll be important that we try to do that. When they were really good, I mean, they had multiple NBA and uh, NFL draft picks all across the defense, and they had superior quickness and athleticism. Do you see that from them when you watch them? On, on the well, their D-line is really good. Uh, and without question, uh, you know, that, that's the strength of their team. They're big, they're strong, they can run. Um, you know, the linebackers play well, and, and the secondary's done a good job. So um, I feel like that they're back to what they've been. Um, they feel confident they probably are as well. Um, and, uh, you know, for years they were a dominant team. And, you uh, so, yes, we'll, we'll have our hands full, and it'll be a, a big test. And uh, this is a team that, uh, you know, we're, we're getting while they're hot. So we'll get their best shot. Jeff, you mentioned, you know, you probably raised enough hell to be calm in the locker room and then also just the communication things. Do you feel like this season has caused you to, I guess, maybe adjust the way you coach or coach differently? And if so, in what ways? Well, believe it or not, at Purdue we had some tough times. It wasn't easy to win there. Uh, and uh, you had to overcome a lot, and you had to win some big games to get in a position to do what you wanted to do. And uh, so I think we're used to uh, hitting some bumps in the road along the way and uh, and, and how to handle it. Um, you know, we had some, some really good success for a while last year, and things were clicking there really for a while that, man, we're, we're really on a, on a roll here. And then it kind of – got us there at the end a little bit and caught up with us and uh, we thought we made some adjustments there and started the season a little better this year but then now some other things have creeped in and we just got to get them fixed and uh, you know every every team is different and yes when the roster is a little different every year you, you better be able to adjust uh, and figure out your team as fast as you can we thought we had some things figured out but um you know, a few things keep popping up. So when that happens, you gotta you gotta adjust a little bit more, and you gotta be open to as coaches realizing, hey, we gotta coach this better or adjust this slightly because it's just not happening. So uh, I don't like to blame the players. It, to me, it's it's us first uh, of how can we, you know, you talk to the players. Why, why did you do this, and what were you thinking? And sometimes you get an idea of, yep. I was right. It was it, he was. It was too complicated. He was. So you, you got to just try to uh, understand where they're coming from and why the mistakes are being made, uh, so that you can limit those. And and uh, so we've had to dive in deep, and uh, we're going to have to this week as well. We had some critical mistakes this past week that uh, should have really bit us in the rear end, but we found a way to overcome it. And uh, we we can't allow that. We've got to we've got to be better. We've got to be sharper. And. And sometimes it's very tedious work because you, you're, you're adjusting things that uh, sometimes work for years that just for some reason isn't working uh, on this team. And you, you've got to make it work for your players. And you got to uh, – because I think when they know what they're doing and uh, the ball snapped and they're in the right position and there's not a whole lot of adjustments on defense, we can play really good. Uh, when there's a few moving parts, we don't play as good. And on offense, um, you know, we – We've got some youngsters in the backfield. They've done a good job, but uh, we've got some new pieces at other positions. We've got to be efficient in what we're doing. And uh, while for the most part we haven't turned it over a whole lot, this past game we did, and it hurt us, and we cannot have that. So just a lot of things to cl clean up that we'll work hard to get done that, that hopefully will help us. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about Kariski, his progress and, and his assets as a tight end, what he's given you? Well, Nate uh, Chris, he's done a great job for us, and he really did last year. Last year, we didn't have a ton of experience at tight end. He played hard. He, he works hard. He's tough. 
you know, this year we, we went and, and got Mark Redman uh, as a tight end who has a ton of experience somewhere else. He's come in and he's done a good job. He's a really good blocker. He makes efficient catches. Uh, he does a good job on the short intermediate routes. Uh, we had uh, Jamari Johnson who was really coming into his own, uh, who has a lot of athleticism and talent. Uh, it was a really good piece that uh, has a bright future, but now he's out for an extended period of time uh, with, with uh, the surgery he has to have. Um, and, uh, you know, Nate is a guy who, who can do a lot of things for us. Um, he's kind of just steady at a lot of things, and uh, he knows what to do, and he does it the best he can, and he doesn't have very many mental mistakes uh, because he understands it. So we've got to rely on him more, and, uh, you know, I think he'll continue to do a good job for us and definitely stepped up this past game. Okay, thank you.